Hi, this is Emily. And this is Helen. Presenting you Hello Audio, where every two weeks we are showing you the best entrepreneurs for music, audio and tech. And a huge thanks to Leo, who's producing this podcast for us. Hello Audio. By the venue Berlin. Hey, welcome to another episode of Hello Audio at the Venue Berlin. My name is Amelie. Um, today for our after work session, we have the team of Soundbrenner and I have in the studio with me today, Alejandro. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So I was doing a bit of research uh, before you guys came here mm -hmm. and I saw that um, the metronome was actually invented in Germany. Correct? I'm sure you know a bit more about the history <laughs> of the metronome than I do. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought it was interesting that it took a team of um, German uh, founders and engineers to completely disrupt the idea of uh, the metronome. So maybe you could start with uh, explaining what Soundbrenner is about a little bit. Sure, yeah. First, uh, a little bit about the metronome itself. It's been around since the 19th century, more or less, and it helps musicians to keep time while they're playing, right? Time is an essential feature of music, and... Every single musician needs to practice to achieve a perfect rhythm. And Soundburner is a platform that uh, empowers and inspires musicians to do that and a lot more. And uh, yeah, we're on the, on the verge of pretty big things. And why did you decide to... Uh, so to explain a little bit, um, Soundburner is a, is a vibrating metronome, right? So you don't hear the you don't hear the tic tac as you traditionally would, which is actually something that I also read um, is uh, a debated topic to have this tic tac noise in mm -hmm. as part of music creation because it's disruptive. So I'm assuming this was one of the motivation to create the. Yeah, uh, in 2014 at the Sarah Week in Berlin, a lot of like a group of six people got together and they had this idea. One of them was a member of the Berlin Philharmonics, so they got together and they were like, okay, we should attempt and try to build a vibrating metronome that is not intrusive on the ears. And um, of course, playing, for example, as a drummer and for a long time with a, an audio track on, on top of the music that you're playing is really damaging for your audition. So um, using a different channel, in this case, the skin to feel the rhythm is, gone, is uh, much better for, for your health, first of all. And it's also not distracting. It's great for kids, too, because they can concentrate on the music and don't worry about listening to the, to the click. Also, it's um, for a live performance, it would also be better to feel it on your skin, so you don't have to wear all this other equipment and um, that is also quite expensive, for example, for a small band or something. Right, so it's a bracelet, I feel like we should yeah. specify this. Sorry, your company is an idea of German people, but it's, it's actually not a German company. There's a tie to Hong Kong, correct? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So the story is that in 2014, after the Startup Weekend, this, this idea actually won that event. And then uh, the team started pitching the idea here and there until they met uh, very cool people that invited them to go to Hong Kong to participate in an accelerator called Brink. And uh, they didn't know much about the, like, the background of this accelerator, but they great, looked great. So they went there and uh, in only 13 months, they went to market. Only two people went to Hong Kong. Like from the six people on the start of weekend, this always happens. They only one stayed, and another one joined the company or CTO, and they are both German. They went to Hong Kong, built this prototype, and uh, launched a successful um, crowdfunding campaign, and then launched a the product. So for all things hardware, China is great. They're, they have a great supply chain. If uh, you're missing one component, you can easily find it somewhere else. Prototyping is great. You find a lot of Uh, resource, resourceful and skillful people and in Berlin you have a lot of interesting also humans that love music and are great software engineers and they want to build a great product and are to be close to, to, the, to the users themselves and understand them so we, we actually have twice the amount of people in Hong Kong that we do in Berlin. Cool and the market is mostly in Europe or? Uh, number one market is the US oh, it is. then it's China and then Japan For us, and uh, 90% of the market is guitar players. Yeah. Uh, according to statistics, drummers and, and piano players are also a big amount of that. We are trying to uh, get closer to the community here in Berlin, uh, for example, and start shooting more content here with local bands or uh, DJs and electronic music makers. That yeah. would be great. Seems like the ideal crowd. Yeah. 
Yeah, we've been developing also integrations with through MIDI. So uh, in this kind of age where like everything sort of gets combined into a, a phone, uh, it feels like, I don't know, you could question why you would get away from, from this and create an external device rather than um, include this within a, a smartphone. Right. Um, first of all, at Summoner, we created also a metronome app, which is the number one metronome app in the world. It is for Android and iOS. It's for free, has no ads, and all the features that you would expect are there. And um, we constantly are in touch with the, the users in regards of what other feature they would like or what we should change in the app. And uh, then we have, I mean, that is integrated into what you already have in your pocket. So you already have a metronome, but it's uh, a ticking one, right? So why sh would somebody want a smart, vibrating, connected metronome that we, that we build that is the first one and the only one in the world? It's because... Um, basically hardware limitations. So let's take, for example, the Apple Watch. Uh, the motor is not really strong enough for you to feel it while playing music. So our motor is seven times stronger. So th the entire device is built around that. So it's also not, not loud. You could record in a studio using it and it would be perfectly fine. And you can also, it also has an LED ring so you can look at it on like an Apple Watch. And also the battery is tuned towards constant use of the motor something that actually Apple doesn't let developers do on the Apple Watch. So you would not be able to build an app like uh, the one we have for, for a smartwatch right now. And um, drummers, again, uh, they, are really, they are really hard to please in this, uh, because they move a lot, right? They move more than the guitar player. And so our metronome is also modular. You can take it out of the strap and wear it on your, on your um, chest, for example. You have one, right? Yeah. You Can have I try it? With me. And this is uh, without the strap right now. And we have three straps, so you can wear it on. And you double tap it with two fingers to start it. So it blinks in different colors based on, on the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it up to the microphone now. Yeah. You know what I think is cool about this, and maybe another use that you haven't thought of? Mm -hmm. um, I do yoga, and I do a lot of pranayama exercise, which is controlling of the breath. And oh. oftentimes I breathe with a metronome, where uh, each breath count goes from five and um, increase at every yeah. single breath, all the way to you know whatever I can do, 20. And um, the tic tac sometimes, I don't know, it, I find it a bit annoying sometimes yeah. in my ears, and I feel like this would be such a, a cool use for it. And I yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, there are many, many other use cases beyond music, and there are some that are quite interesting. Like there's a, a golf school in Japan that uses a product with their students to teach them when to swing. And huh. uh, for example, dancers are also a good, good market, and um, runners, they also want to keep a pace, right? Like a marathon runner. And, um, but we are fully concentrated on musicians and that's our target audience right now. So tonight the topic, I guess, yeah. is um, wearables and technology mm -hmm. in music. So I guess um, haptic feedback is uh, one way to describe your product. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know, um, haptic feedback is uh, the feedback of touch to the end user. So for example, if you have an Android phone, uh, when you touch the keys, it vibrates, that's uh, haptic feedback or haptics. So I was wondering if like, the metronome could be used by somebody who listens to music to experience it differently. For example, like um, you mentioned the, the golf players. How would this work for uh, experiencing music? Would that work? Um, technology more and more is opening up ways of experiencing multimedia in general. Mm -hmm. And music is also extended by this now. Uh, there are products like, like certain bands that have a bass that, for example, for a bass player, they also let, let you feel what you're playing more, stuff like that. At Sunburner, we have a different use case than listening to music with a vibration. We, we um, are building tools that are wearable, and uh, with good design, we empower musicians to, to do what they want to do, which is be better musicians and master their craft. So uh, it is a completely different use case like that. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm assuming that you probably um, do some study into other wearables or other um, examples of haptic feedback, what kind of trends have you uh, witnessed in the last few years? Yeah, um, definitely music making is becoming more portable. Devices are getting smaller and the entire industry, even though it's quite slow and adopting certain trends, it is moving forward. For example, one of our uh, retail partners, Guitar Center, has uh, made business with us because they, 
they realize these trends and they open up spaces in their stores for connected devices, which we are, right? And um, so it, you can totally notice that the industry is starting to shift, but it's, it's, there's not much out there, actually. Uh, there's not much innovation beyond uh, music instruments themselves and uh, DAW software and stuff like that. And you guess why that is? Like, what does it take for it to have a, a breakthrough? Mm, well, there are a lot of, lots of fails in the <laughs> failures, like in, in the wearable in industry to start with. So it's complicated to when you basically need two things. First, you need a, a real problem that you want to solve. It's not good enough to just be gimmicky and to be a pretty thing. I mean, of course, a wearable becomes a, a symbol of fashion and it needs to look good. So that like that adds an extra layer of complexity to just building a, a, a another type of hardware. That's important for you, the the way the product looks, the way it's yeah. it's worn as a to some extent it's a it's a fashion accessory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Becomes becomes a part of you when you wear it. And you um, have only one model right now. There's this this circle or yeah yeah uh, the summer pulse was designed around uh, making it as simple as possible so everybody could use it and that's why it's a circle and it's a full wheel yeah and um, there is no wrong way to wear it like there's no upside down and stuff like that because you can put it whatever you want on stage and it works and another thing that happens with wearables is that you need uh, an emotional component to it and uh People need to be excited when wearing your device. They, they need to feel identified with it. Uh, for example, the Google Glass, even though it was great, a great product, nobody was excited about it. Nobody found it really useful. It wasn't solving a real problem. So it, it failed like that. And now they've pivoted into the, the medical industry, but let's see what happens there. Plus they looked horrible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, companies like Garmin, they provide real solutions for runners, for example. And... They they make over a billion dollars in in wearable each year. So you also have Fitbit, and uh, sure. the Apple Watch has sold 20 million units, and the 70 per percent of the athletes, let's say marathon runners, for example, they use wearables to track their progress. So it's also important in music to bring that up and to give statistics and motivate people with wearables. Right. So as a startup building a, a hardware, was there any obstacles that you faced and any tips that you could give to, to startups wanting to do uh, a hardware um, in music? There are many. First of all, as a hardware company, you, can, you only have one shot. You can only make one product. Otherwise, if you fail, then you're, you're dead as a company, right? And it's quite expensive to build hardware because you need to pay many, many things up front to the providers and the factories and maybe even the retailers if you already have that set up. And um, so you need a lot more cash to start with. You need a lot more funding. And um, you need to figure out so many things, right? Like the battery readings, charging stations or cables and firmware updates, for example, if you want that, which we, we do use that quite often. There was this case of one uh, smart um, door lock that they bricked many of their devices through a firmware update and then people couldn't get into their houses anymore. <laughs> and, <Nice>. <laughs> right? <laughs> and um, on, on music, you need to be also quite precise with what you do. Being a metronome, for example, you cannot be toying around with precision and shipping software and hardware that is not good to be used, right? And um, so it's, it's challenging to build hardware that is connected with software actually if you try if you're a software company you try to build hardware it's going to be really really hard you need to start with hardware in your mind and in your dna so you can then build build the software together with it right and you need to be quite close also to your partners if for example you are not visiting your factory all the time you might find uh, problems right mostly if if you Depends where your factory is, of course, right? It might be different working in, in Germany than it is working in Mexico, where, where I'm from, right? Like, uh, the way of working is different, and the culture can be hard. So as a European, for example, going to China to build a product, uh, you need to learn the culture, you need to learn many things. And uh, never forget that the user is first, and uh, that you cannot do certain sacrifices for the sake of shipping it quickly or something like that. Sure. I guess the emergence of uh, crowdfunding has uh, been in your favor quite a lot also yeah. in making this a success. We actually are launching, launching a Kickstarter campaign for our next hardware product this September. 
So stay tuned for that. And <laughs> Tease. <laughs> yeah. And basically our plan is to replace all the most important tools that musicians have, aside their, their instruments, of course, and uh, put them in a wearable form factor that they can use all the time. And what we did for the metronome, we want to do for, for all these other tools. <laughs> We're getting a question from the audience here. Uh, <laughs> are you able to collect data from the, from the user of the product? Uh, how the product is used or so forth? Mm, data is a sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. you know, GDPR <laughs> and all the thing, we, we take that quite seriously. I mean, for your own purpose also, I guess, not to, to share. Self-improvement, yeah. That is in our, our, our plan to do that. For sure, and right now we don't we don't provide tools for that, but we know that uh, inspiration, motivation, uh, practice, constant routine of doing what you have to do as a musician is hard. Um, most musicians are not on that 24/7, right? They have other things to do, so it's hard to to put yourself to it. And we want to help them to do that also. And our next product is go is gonna have tools for that too. Yeah. Cool. That's super exciting. Um, so I guess the one last question that there is to ask you uh, is something that we ask everybody that uh, comes over is what is your current favorite track? Current favorite track? Yeah. Oh, um, I would say is, can I swear on this uh, show? We might bleep it, but go for it. <laughs> All right. It's uh, a song that a co the co-worker actually showed me. It's called Fuck Your Accent. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually from a band from Berlin. Oh, cool. We'll look into that. Thank you so much, Alejandro, for being here. We are with Soundbrenner today, uh, all about the future of wearables in music. This was Hello Audio. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Hello Audio by the venue Berlin.